Hello and welcome back to Lansdowne Road. And uh, it has finished uh, nil nil between Belgium and Republic of Ireland. Um, what did you guys make of that? Sorry, I was having some audio problems. It's been one of those days, hasn't it? Can't quite hear myself. And that's why, because I had the microphone the wrong way around. Uh, anyway, um, yes, so it's finished nil nil between Republic of Ireland and Belgium, a very good performance from the boys in green. Probably the best performance I've seen um, from us for well, probably since Scotland um, away. Uh, the two two, uh, sorry, the two one loss in Scotland. I thought it was a very good performance, very diligent. Um, it has finished nil nil. Just going to put that score just in case you didn't realise it. Here we go. There we are. Nil nil. I'll put a little banner at the end there. So, uh, what did you make of that yourselves? Um, don't forget, uh, we are Irish Football's most interactive podcast, and we like to think we're the voice of the fans anyway. So we want to hear, I want to hear from you. I'm uh, going to be live here for the next little while anyway. Uh, what did you make of that? Did you uh, Were you impressed um, by John O'Shea? Do you want him to get the job full-time now? Because that's probably going to come out. Um, what did you make of it? I mean, just looking at some of the stats there, I think we had a lot less, um, just looking at it here, I mean, in terms of stats, we had 35% possession. Belgium had 65, but we had 11 attempts on goal, and Belgium had eight. And uh, really should have won. I mean, thought Evan Ferguson, um, you know, very unlucky with the penalty. It, 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 it was a slip. You know, it was a slip. Very, very uh, easy to uh, to have a go at him. Obviously, his confidence is down. I think, you know, Brady probably should have taken the penalty, but look, they're trying to get his confidence up, weren't they? But uh, that was a bit disappointing. He had a great chance in the fr- in the right at the beginning of the first half. Or, sorry, the second half. Uh, great cross in from Robbie Brady. I mean, Robbie Brady. I just want to say, whoever um, you know said that Robbie Brady was finished. I just want to say, shame on them, really. Um, you know, I anyone who watches the podcast always. You know, would, would know that I've been a major advocate of Robbie Brady's inclusion in the squad, and uh, we don't need to talk about that anymore. Um, man of the match goes to uh, Josh Cullen. Um, I thought actually should have gone to Robbie Brady as well, but um, there you go. Um, I just thought, yeah, just a very diligent performance. I thought it was a bit of common sense management from John O'Shea. Um, wasn't very exciting. We play, you know, we play football when we needed to. Um, I noticed there was a lot more aggression about us. I thought we were a lot more aggressive than we've ever been under um, Stephen Kenny. You know, that was one major issue we had on the previous manager, wasn't it? We just didn't have enough aggression, hence why we could see a lot of goals uh, from outside the box. You know, not close down midfield. And, you know, the two lads midfield, Cullen and Smallbone, I thought they they complemented each other very well. I thought they were really, really good together. A uh, lovely bit of link up play, actually. Smonix in the second half. Um, Ogbeni to Smallbone, lays it off to Smonix. Smonix just couldn't get his foot through it and, you know, just couldn't just couldn't uh, trouble the goalkeeper. And speaking of Smonix, I mean, 28, he makes his, uh, his debut for the Republic of Ireland finally. And he looks like the sort of player that we have been crying out for um, for a number of years, just linking up the play. Um, Behind Evan Ferguson, I thought he was excellent. Uh, Smolix obviously, you know, took him off the last few minutes. Um, would have liked to have seen Festy. I, th- I thought Coleman was okay. Y- you saw glimpses of uh, Seamus Coleman of old, but you know he is thirty-five at the end of the day. Uh, so you know, good diligent game from him, I suppose. The defense looked looked good. You know, they, they looked organized. The defense, Callagher, um, he was only really called on once in the game. Smart save from Tillerson. Um, I think that's his name. I did write it down somewhere. You know me and my names. Um, but no, he you know, he got down low and just t- tapped it around the post. I just thought it was really good. We really should have won that match. And uh, look, you know, let's not kid ourselves. That, that Belgium team was missing a lot of... Uh, you know, I was missing De Bruyne. I was missing Lukaku as well. You know, two very important players, but still a good side. And I just thought we were smart. You know, you're not going to outplay a team like... Belgium, you're not going to play him off the park. You know, you have to be cute. And and I thought we were cute. I thought we were cute and I thought we were quite savvy and that's something that's been missing. You know, uh, we mix it up a little bit. 
you know, uh, I think we tra- changed formation about two, you know, three or four times. Um, it looked like we were playing a five-two-three, and then we mixed. We were mixing it around with a five-four-one, and it worked. It really worked. We we, we looked. We went toe to toe with this Belgium team, um, and I just thought it was, yeah. I just thought it was really. I thought it was good. You know, a bit of a bore a match. Um, apparently, well, there was thirty-eight thousand fans here. Um, bit of a bad, you know, bit of a rubbish atmosphere. If we're being completely honest, but you know, a game playing Belgium in March on a Saturday, you know, really should be a sellout. And I think the FAI need to really have a look at the marketing there. I, you know, forcing people to travel up from the country. Um, now, look, I travel over from London for every game, but. Not everyone, you know, I'm over for the week. You know what I mean? Like people will will, will come up to the country. I was talking to two two lads that watched the pod actually, uh, downstairs and you know, they travel from Cork. That's not easy, you know. That's not easy. And you should be able to buy a ticket for one match. I, I think there should be a sweetener to get the two, but I don't think it should completely um cut people off from getting to one that's just my take and anyway it's my hot take what did you guys think of the match by the way i see the comments coming in and we'll get to those uh what did you think what did you think of the selection were you happy what did you think of swanix finally making his debut um you know 28 but he's here now and uh, what did you think of evan ferguson he is you know they done a number on him didn't they they were all over him um even the chance that Ogbeni had in the first half where he just kind of curled it into the side netting I mean the, uh, oh, I can't. What was his name? Uh, the Belgian face was it? Hold on, face. Um, absolutely. Like I mean, we know we know what Ferguson's a superstar to making, but you can could have waited till the end of the game to take a shirt, uh, ripping it off of his back almost. But you know, he's a big boy, Ferguson, and and he handled it quite well. But they were really doing a number, really doing a number on him, and he is he. His confidence isn't great, but there was a lovely knockdown for Smolix as well. Um, from Evan Ferguson, he's he's a really, really utilizing his size. Um, I thought as well. But what did you guys think of it out there? Uh, were you at the match? Were you watching it from? Um, what do you think? What do you think for Tuesday? You know, I mean, there's probably going to be a bit of pressure on the team now that um, they're going to want probably expect a result against Switzerland. Um, but you know, I just thought it was really good. It was very hopeful, and um, yeah, it just goes to show you, doesn't it? If you're if you're a bit cute, you're a bit savvy. You don't try to be too clever, you know. You, you can you can. There's enough in that team. There's enough in that team. What did you think of the two lads in midfield, um, Smallbone and Cullen? Did you like them? You, is that what you want to see going forward? You know, uh, give us a shout. Um, I suppose I better give a quick uh, shout uh, if you. Like what you hear, love what you see, do hit that subscribe button. And uh, especially on the YouTube channel, we're trying to grow that. Head over to our uh, social media, head over to Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, right, let's get to your comments. Let's have a look here. They come flying in. Let's have a look. First one. Martin Fitzpatrick uh, feels bad for Ferguson. Uh, he needed to score. Yeah, he did really. Um, but, you know, I think it was... Yeah, it was confident, but he did slip, to be fair. <laughs> I saw on UEFA, um, I think, Martin, I saw the um, the report that has pitch excellent, and I'm looking down, and I can see Guinness in the circle. I can see Harvey, Harvey Norman over there, um, and behind that goal as well. I can see where it's cut up. I can see where all the rugby lines are, you know, players slipping around the place. Um, speaking of which, what did you think of Ireland's aggression? We, we looked to be really aggressive. Um, something that we didn't see under Stephen Kenny. Like, just a lot of fouls going in. And I was quite proud, you know. I was sitting there going, yeah, you know, that's, that's what we're about. You know, you've got to put it about a little bit, you know. I think too many teams have, have come here in the past. And, you know, it's just a nice day out. Nice stadium, nice pitch. And, you know, I just zip the ball around. No one really putting in a tackle, no one putting us on any pressure. Uh, what did you make of that? Uh, Mark Fitzpatrick on Facebook. Uh, played well, happy enough. Penalty was disappointing. Uh, David asks me from YouTube, who do you think was my man of the match? Um, I would have gone for Brady. I thought Brady was excellent. Um, we didn't play a lot of football. We played it in um, 
we played it in part. You know, you're, you're you're looking at a team like Belgium, and they're you know they're they're a passing team. But we showed that. You know, we we held on to the ball. We weren't just kicking it into corners, but there were some poor bits of passing. I think it was Coleman there towards the end. He didn't have an out ball, and he just skied into Rosette. And there was there was bits of that. But um, you know, I think when we did when we did play a bit of football, it was mostly good. We caused them a lot of problems. At one stage, we had eight attempts and goal. They only had four. So I would have gone for Robbie Brady. I thought he was excellent. I thought he was really good. Um, rolling back the years, and as I said, never never doubted him. Um, David here, see you soon. Oh, I've just realized who that is. How are you doing, David? <laughs> um, that is my nephew, David. Uh, the same name, actually. Yes, I will see you tomorrow, my good man. I uh, hope you guys are keeping well up there. Um, Dave, remember when you said Robbie Brady would never play for Ireland again, man of the match tonight? Now, you see, this is what we have to be very careful of now, folks. You know, this sort of sort of slander and the, these lies that get thrown at me here. And, you know, you know, I don't think the raw faithful, Nick, are going to listen to your um, just made up nonsense, really. Uh, every, anyone knows who watches the podcast that I've been always an advocate of Robbie Brady. I've always thought he was a fabulous player and so I, I won't hear um, anything more about it. Um, Martin Prennegas, Sammy was very good, got better as the game went on. Uh, Coleman, and I think Martin's phone has just, um, he's just sending messages in uh, sections. So hold on. So Martin Martin says, Coleman, was a really, really positive start. Players, come on, Martin. I believe in you. Can we complete the sentence? Oh, no. No, no, no. He, uh, <laughs> poor Martin. God bless him. Um, Warren Kershaw, how you doing, Warren? What game are you watching? We should have won no game. So there was no game to be won. Is that what you're saying, Warren? Um, I, I was here. <laughs> if you want, I could turn the camera around and show you. I was, that was the game I was watching. We missed a penalty. Uh, they did, they had one chance. We had several. What game are you watching? Uh, Brian Wilson, very promising performance. Would have liked to see Mikey Johnson on for longer, more important, uh, on for longer. More importantly, I saw the famous lanyard in real life. You did indeed, Brian. Good man, friend of the pod. There, it's good chatting to you. Um, I was lovely actually chatting to some um, a lot of positive, positive feedback coming uh, up towards the pod. They all said I'm their favourite. Um, don't you don't have to ask me; just take my word for it. Um, but yeah, no, it was lovely, lovely chat to some uh, some of the wrong faithful out there. Um, really good stuff. Uh, Sandra Kyo, how are you doing, Sandra? Delight for Brady. He had a great game. Yes, he did. And shame on those who said he was finished. Absolutely just scandalous. Uh, JP Burney, how are you doing, JP? Price of tickets for a friendly. Diabolical. How much were the tickets, actually? Um, I, I'm going to say, I mean, I'm, I'm a season ticket holder. Um, I just don't get to use it too much, which I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not giving out about, by the way, because I'd, I'd rather be doing this, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, how much is it? 70 euros, is it for a ticket? Uh, Sandra Kyo again, need to get rid of the double match tickets. Couldn't get them as I wouldn't make it Tuesday evening. Yeah, I think there should be a sweetener, Sandra. I think there should be a sweetener to get the two. I understand that the FEI need the money, but you know, when the team's not in the, in the when the team standing isn't great and it's not great for off the field, um, on the field, off the field, you know, you need to get a bit of goodwill there with the fans. And you need you need arses and seats basically, and we haven't thirty eight thousand. Look, it's not a bad, it's not a bad crowd, and and this was in the old Lansdowne Road, and it was nearly forty thousand. George Hamilton uh, would be saying, you know, I dare. You, I, if you look around any stadium in Europe now tonight, there'll be very few that would have a, a, an attendance of forty thousand. You know, but it's a fifty thousand seat stadium. That means there was twelve thousand empty seats. And it really should have been a full house. Belgium, their top opposition. You know, you've got a legend like John O'Shea in charge of the team. You know, Man United, a popular player amongst Man United fans, an Ireland legend. And, you know, this should have been full. But yeah, they really need to look at that. Um, G says we are going nowhere without a midfielder. So bad in the middle. Well, I thought we were okay in the uh, with the two. I thought they were good. I thought Cullen and uh, Smallbone. 
complementing each other quite well. But yeah, it, look, it is it is a problem performance. Uh, performance. It is a problem uh, position, no doubt. Dell O'Brien, uh, great performance in fairness. Second half, they didn't pose any threat. No, I, I look, I think it died out a little bit. You know, I mean, they made three substitutions. Uh, Belgium did, didn't they? Like at, at half time, so you know they're playing England, aren't they? Next, um, next week. So they were just basically, yeah. Yeah, you know, they're just kind of seeing it out, didn't want any injuries, that sort of thing. Uh, JP Bernie, Smollett's up the part, missing link, him and Johnson will do well. Yeah. Um, he, uh, yeah, he really, really, really looked like the kind of player we were missing. Um, he, he gives us something, just just links it up really, really nicely, gets in, and he, he did grow into the game. Um, David, like what you said, we played well. We did, we did, David. Thank you very much. Uh, Jason Fitzsimmons, uh, happy with that selection. Very happy with Sammy and the midfield. Brady was very good today too. Absolutely, Jason. And uh, yeah, hope you're well too. And I, yourself and Mark met before the uh, met before the, um, the, the the match. Martin Prendergast again, decent start for O'Shea. Played well. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to be sniffling, guys. Uh, it's bloody cold up here. Uh, played well and so different to the last tenure overall. Uh, Coleman looked tired late on. Sammy very bright. Evan would have learned a lot from that type of game. Yeah, and you know, I think Evan played well. You know, I think uh, you know he was he, you know, there was the flick on, so his his off the ball um, game was was okay. You know, he didn't have a terrible game, but you could see his confidence is shot. He looked like he has the weight of the world on his shoulders, and it's quite a contrast to the last time he played for Ireland or last year when he was playing for Ireland, when it just looked so easy for him. But he does look like he's carrying the weight of the world on the shoulders. Uh, Mark Prendick has again back three, very solid. The Sammy chance. From not then was very quint to Robbie in 2002. Yeah, and there's always room for that. Jimmy Shell, different manager, same crap. Oh, oh, Jimmy's not happy. Um, Dennis Jenkins, shame about the Ferguson miss, but clean sheet. Wouldn't get too carried away about it, but green shoots. Like Sammy and Radian had a, a decent game after being recalled. Uh, Jimmy Shell uh, agrees with Sandra Keo on her point about the uh, double tickets. Um, Aiden O'Brien, Brian Kerr said that they want to get the team back winning games. I suspect to dig at Kenny. Just goes to show you it's easier said than done. Yeah, actually, probably the biggest shout of the night came to Brian when Brian Kerr appeared up on the screen. He was down in a, in a tunnel watching it there uh, with a little earpiece in as well, um, which was interesting. Um, Darren O'Grady, Sammy lived up to expectations. As you said, last night's program needed to restore aggression, and we did. Overall, a lot better, even if some poor passing, uh, lack of control that could have uh, caused damage in different circumstances. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, it's a natural fiber um, of of our mentality. We we are aggressive. We are normally, we've always been an aggressive team. You know, we put it up to them. We, we make it a very difficult place to come. And under the last manager, um, Stephen Kenny just seemed to, Strip that away. Um, we, and you need to be aggressive playing football. You know, you can't just be passive. You have to be aggressive. You have to win the ball back. You have to close people down. You know, you have to put it up to them. Otherwise, you give these guys the room, the time, the space, and freedom, which we, we did a lot under Kenny, especially towards the end. You're going to lose games. And guess what? We did. Uh, Mark Prendergast says, Kian Prendergast comment. Defended really well. Uh, Brady was excellent, calm on the ball and brings quality. Good to see you on the big screen, Dave. P.S. Dad says, you're tired, Brady. Hope. <laughs> Callum Adela plays Tuesday. Can't do not believe what your dad says. I've always been an advocate for uh, Robbie Brady, and you know it. Aiden O'Brien. Having said that, I do like Brian Kerr, and I'm glad he's back in the fold. Jim Bear, Disappointing penalty from Evan. Wish Johnson should have started. Uh, glad to see Sammy play. Love of anybody can't finish. Kudos to O'Shea. He had them playing solid and tough. Looked like Ireland. It did, didn't it? It looked, yeah, it looked like they were in a game. You know, it looked. And I like, you know, you can play top opposition. You know, you can't play them at their game because they're better than you at it. And, you know, that, that's what they do. Uh, but you can be cute. And we were just cute. We, we, we just had a bit about us, you know, something that's just been lacking. Uh, Martin Prendergast, are you checking out Brazil tonight, Dave? Uh, no, I'm not, Martin. Um, I'm I'm sitting here. I'm on the podcast, and you know why aren't you? You know why aren't you here? Where are you? Why aren't you watching England? Um, although yes, I I do know what you mean by that. 
sorry, lads, inside joke. You are. Uh, Matthew Duff rolled the dice with Ferguson's confidence, letting him take the pen. Would have liked to see Brady take it, tried and tested. Agreed. Padraig O'Baron. Hello, Padraig. O'Brien here. How you doing, Padraig? Hope you are well. Welcome to the pod. Uh, Peter Smith. Uh, Ferguson, header to Swanick was vintage. Tosh Hector Keegan, uh, long before it was vintage. Jack Charlton, 100% agree. Uh, why can't people on social media be nice towards the team? Think in particularly of Facebook comments section. Yeah, uh, there was one lad on there that, uh, like, he just went off and one, like, he started saying about his country's a mess and all that. I was like, Jesus, you know, <laughs> we're nil nil at half time. It was not as if we were losing 20 nil. Um, Podrick uh, says surname is O'Brien. Well, welcome to uh, welcome to the podcast, Podrick. Hopefully, uh, you'll be watching a lot more with us, and we get to hear a lot more from you. Uh, Darren Sweeney, sick of people and managers making excuses for the poor results with Ireland. We have a team, we have quality, we have youth. We need a top management. In who is uh, in who is O'Shea? Come on, FAI. So Darren wants uh, John O'Shea there. We have to remember it is just one game. And it will be two games on Tuesday. That is not enough to make a break a manager, in my opinion. Um, and on to the next comment. Uh, when the sport like rugby, uh, when the sport like rugby, sports swimming, J wrestling, and everything. Not sure what he means there. Um, that's Padre O'Brien. Um, I mean, mine, uh, all positives, excellent performance. Collins Coleman and Smallborn were the pick of the crop. Um, Adam Kavner says that good energy tonight. Smollix had a good amount of tenacity that's been missing from a game. Looking forward to Switzerland and hopefully O'Brien starts. Uh, Jake O'Brien, yeah, he's done very, very well there. Um, Adam T. Uh, Brian Kerr, defensive master class, regardless of the manager's situation, Kerr should, Kerr should stay. Um, not too sure. Give me two seconds, guys. Sorry, folks, just had to blow my nose there. <laughs> this is what happens when you get, when you're live. It's a charm of the podcast, as someone told me earlier on. Um, Kieran Boyle, how you doing, Kieran? With a better looking kit, might have been a different story. Look good, play good. Way to Jesus with Adidas. Ah, oh, top man. Two, thank you very much, Deaglin. And you got your own one. Do you want me to sign it for you, Deaglin? Yeah. <laughs> Page nineteen of the uh, of the program. Uh, nice one. Um, yeah, sorry, didn't just give me my uh, programs. Top man. Um, yeah, as Karen Ball says, with a better looking kit, might have been a different story. Look good, play good. Hashtag away to Jace with a story. Hashtag bring back Adidas. Um, Brian Wilson says, agree on Brady taking the penalty. Absolutely. Uh, Richard Joyce, O'Shea is proof that a fellow with zero coaching experience can get a team playing better than Kenny did. So we'll wait to look at it. Um, Darren Sweeney, uh, don't want O'Shea in top management. Uh, don't want O'Shea, uh, want top management. Uh, Daniel Mullen, uh, good performance, just annoying. It's the same problem, uh, not scoring again. Uh, Brian Wilson, impressive debut from Sammy. Uh, Jimmy Shell, guys, just heard Lancer Rugby Games moving to Croke Park, I assume, with some soccer team. Is something up with the Aviva? I haven't heard that, Jimmy. Um, haven't heard that at all. I have no idea um, about that. Hold on a second. Let me ask Connor. Connor, how are you? Um, we've just heard. Guys, I uh, just heard Leinster Rugby Games moving to Crow Park. Is there something up with the soccer team or is there something up with the Aviva? Yeah. Don't know. Going to Crow Park? No. That's news, that's, that's news to Connor. <laughs> So I'm just asking there. And that's news to Connor over at uh, um, Republic of Ireland Player Tracker. He's just working away on his article there. Um, he's what are you writing about in your article, Connor? About what a privilege it is to sit next to me. And you know, he got me to sign his program uh, earlier on. True, huh? 
he's writing about how John O'Shea is the man for the job. Uh, Conor McAvoy, yeah. Because since Carsley's gone now, <laughs> we're both we both advocates for Carsley. Um, now I see Dan, I see Dan McDonald's walking out, friend of the pod. <laughs> um, yeah, so we don't know, Jimmy, is what we're saying. We haven't got a clue. But uh, sure, when do we ever? Aidan O'Brien, Damien Delaney uh, doing watered down version of Noel Quinn's. Steve Staunton, Love In on Virgin Media. Jesus, yeah. Um, yeah, and David Myler uh, doing the commentary there. Smodich? I thought it was Smodix. Smodich, apparently. I was listening to it um, on the Sky Player. Uh, Mofo says, Kit is awful. Um, for a second there, I thought he came out with Sky on the front of it. Then I realized it was the 20. <laughs> Or sorry, the numbers on the front. Um, Sandra Kyo, I uh, feel like it was the same as a Kenny game, all offense and no goals. Oh, controversial. And uh, Daniel Mullen, could Leicester be moving because of the NFL game be played at the Viva soon? Ah, yeah, Connor, it's because of the NFL, perhaps. See, you should have known that. Why didn't you know that? Yeah, don't go to Republic of Ireland player tracker. I haven't got a clue. Um, on Twitter, and Stephen O'Rourke, lads played very well, did a great job, only missing the goal absolutely well there you have it folks i think we're going to leave it there um i'm uh yes yeah, so i'm going to go and go, get a bag of chips see the lads and uh enjoy the rest of my saturday night in dublin and um we will be back with a preview the day before um the switzerland game so uh, we're looking forward to that and there's a big picture photograph thing going on by the pitch side there not sure what's going on there but anyway listen we're gonna leave it there thank you very much uh for watching as always do remember guys hit that subscribe button um head over to our instagram facebook and our twitter page uh we will obviously be back same again hour before kickoff on um tuesday against switzerland 6 45 kickoff and then same again we'll be back straight after the game nil nil draw um you know can't really argue with that sort of stop the rot and then hopefully we can kick on on Tuesday and we'll see what goes on. Anyway, listen, we're going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will see you guys on, well, hopefully before Tuesday anyway. Good night. God bless.